8,000 marine species in New Zealand waters, each with their own fascinating story waiting to be told. Here on the northern coastline of the North Island in New Zealand, there is a mysterious creature, the black sea urchin. So a sea urchin is an animal, and I've got two skeletons here of sea urchins. Uh, it has, most of them have a globular shape, which can be a bit pointy, like this one, or can be quite flat, like this one. They're related to starfish. A starfish is basically a sea urchin with arms. And they're related to brittle stars, to sea lilies, and sea cucumbers. Sea urchins have some menacing weapons. When they are alive, there are spines coming up of the body. And the spines can be really small, like in the case of Kina, which is the native New Zealand sea urchin, or they can be really long. They have different functions. One of them is movement. They use spines together with the tube feet, which are tiny, <laughs> tiny tubes uh, with a disc at the base that is used to, and they're used to move around. But the spines help in that movement. But they are, they're also used for defense. Those spines are definitely effective weapons for survival, but are they an obstacle when it comes to mating? Sea urchins are so-called broadcast spawners, which means that they spawn eggs and sperm into the water. And eggs and sperm meet in the water, which is where fertilization happens. They use the water as medium for the fertilization of the eggs. So when it is the time, specific time of the year or the month, depending on where you are in, in, the, in the world, females and males all together spawn their eggs and sperm in the water. Once the egg is fertilized, there starts the development of the embryos. The embryos develop uh, until they become larvae, and the larvae are really tiny, they are around half a millimeter. The larvae then float around in the plankton, because the larvae of sea urchins are part of the plankton, what we call plankton, which is just the, all the organisms that float freely around the water. Plankton that can mature into a big black sea urchin. Now that's something truly amazing. So what exactly is a black sea urchin? So I worked on three different species, but one of them was the main focus of my project. And it is a sea urchin that has arrived from Australia around five to six de decades ago. Uh, now it is present only around the north northern part of New Zealand, which is called black sea urchin because it's really big. It's around 15, so the skeleton of that sea urchin is, is around 15 centimeters of diameter and the spines are almost as long. So an adult black sea urchin is, is like this big. The epic journey from Australia to New Zealand is a huge challenge, especially when it's made at snail's pace. So how do these black sea urchins do it? Sea urchins move a little bit, but not too much. So the only way this sea urchin could have arrived from Australia to New Zealand is by using its larvae. It's got this tiny larvae which can live up to four months. This sea urchin was only found historically in New South Wales, in Australia. And uh, you need to know that there is a current that goes down along the eastern coast of Australia that is called East Australian Current. And when it is around the middle of New South Wales, it splits into branches. One keeps flowing down towards Tasmania and one flows eastward towards northern New, northern New Zealand. So what we suppose is, has happened is that the larvae were carried by this branch of uh, the East Australian current from New South Wales to New Zealand. That they arrived in New Zealand and they starting settling down and building up a population. All that makes for a pleasant journey. But what happens after they arrive in New Zealand? that sea urchin feeds on algae, on seaweed, and the people that have studied it in Tasmania found out that when it settled in new parts of Tasmania, it started grazing, overgrazing all the seaweed present there, creating the so-called bearing grounds that are basically uh, parts of the sea bottom that are only covered in sea urchins and rocks and coralline algae. There are consequences on all the ecosystem because many species fish, for example, and uh, rock lobsters also 
use uh, the seaweed as a protection for their, for their babies and juveniles. So if you get rid of the seaweeds, uh, you lower the number of uh, species of fish and other animals that you can find associated to that particular region. Just because they have no places where their um, young can shelter. So we, we were worried that the same thing could happen to New Zealand. But then there are a few differences, few differences between New Zealand and Tasmania. For example, in, in this sea urchin is predated on by, mainly by the rock lobster. Uh, in Tasmania, there is quite a heavy fishery of lo rock lobsters. So the predator was uh, taken away and the sea urchin population started to increase. In New Zealand, the population of rock lobsters is still fairly okay, it's doing well, even if it is fished on, but not as much as Tasmania. So the population is still, we suppose that it is still under control. Moreover, in Tasmania, there are no other sea urchins. There is only this sea urchin. While in New Zealand, the black sea urchin shares the habitat with, with Kina. So there must be some kind of competition going on. Uh, and possibly the native sea urchin is keeping the population of the other sea urchin in check. So what happens when the climate changes? An increase of roughly two degrees in the sea water, which is what is expected by the end of the century, is going to favor the non-native sea urchin a lot. The larvae will do a lot better. Um, but having said that, what I found is also that Kina is not going to be badly affected by, by global climate change. So what I found is that Kina is doing well, really well now in New Zealand. And the big black sea urchin right now is barely mm, hanging there because the larvae are at the very lower end of their thermal tolerance. But then temperature is going to increase. Nothing mostly is going to happen to Kina because it's still going to be in a range of temperatures that, it is, that is favorable to its larvae. But the other sea urchin, the black sea urchin from Australia, is going to be, its, its larvae are going to be put in the middle of their thermal optimum. So they will start to develop more quickly and with a higher success rate. With this hypothesis, more and more research needs to be put in to discover the answers. Let's keep an eye on what could happen in the future. <laughs>